Uh, hi everyone, I'm Jonathan. Um, so I'm presenting this talk on behalf of Lincoln McKenzie, who's leading this project. Um, and Lincoln is the algal guy, and I'm kind of the DNA guy. Um, so toxic algae, why do we care? I guess um, the word toxic and harmful kind of gives it away, but the algae accumulate in shellfish, um, and then when people eat shellfish, they, the toxins can produce a range of effects. So ranging from diarrhoea to memory loss to paralysis and um, really bad for morale, death. Um, so at the moment, the presence of the, or the, these, the presence of these toxins in shellfish are monitored um, by monitoring phytoplankton in the environment. So a water sample is taken and people look through a microscope and identify the, um, the algae present. Um, and this is time consuming and requires a centralised lab and transport of samples. So we were charged with developing a field based DNA based method of identifying these algae. Um, and we chose these five species. Um, they all produce toxins that can cause diarrhoea through to death. Um, so we looked at two different systems. We looked at um, a lyophilised system, so these are all the buffers and enzymes and DNA material that you need in a reaction to identify the alga present in a sample, the presence of toxic alga present uh, in a sample um, taken from the water. And it targets a gene in the saxitoxin synthesis pathway, so saxitoxin is a paralytic toxin. Um, and if there's no gene, obviously there's no toxin produced, so you're pretty safe to eat the shellfish. Um, and we also looked at this new system, which is a solid phased system for detecting DNA. So this is quite unique in that what I spent three or four years doing my PhD on now comes in a single tube and you just buy it from the store basically. Um, and add your template, add your DNA and you're away. It tells you whether the toxin producing gene is there or not. Too keen. Um, so it's a really simple setup. You have a method of extracting the DNA. You filter the water through a filter. You smash it up with little beads. You pull off the liquid, which contains the DNA from the algae. Um, and then you run a reaction on it in a little incubator, which is the little orange um, machine there in the middle. And you have a computer to talk to the instrument. Um, and it's reasonably low cost. Individual reactions are about $2 a reaction and um, the instrument is probably about $9,000 worth of um, instrumentation there, which is a lot cheaper than thirty or 40000 that we use in the lab. Um, so we did some tests. We found that our um, DNA-based system was, uh, did correlate reasonably well with microscopy, which is the method that's used at the moment to monitor the environment. The shellfish themselves are measured using chemistry, so Matt's team runs them runs some um, shellfish samples through his magical machine and tells actual toxin concentrations. But that's even slower than microscopy. So we've gone from using microscopy as a um, proxy measure to using DNA as a proxy measure for the presence of these toxins. Um, so we were pretty happy with how it worked. Um, and especially down the, the bottom end of the um, algal concentrations, which is where you shift from harvest and non-harvest criteria. Um, and then uh, we set about and organised a massive field trial um, last autumn. And so we were fortunate, when I say we organised it, I'm being a bit flippant, but we were fortunate, and the mussel farmers were unfortunate, that there was a, top, a bloom of Alexandrium pacificum. Um, and it produced that red tide that you can see in that bottom corner. So we took our little assay out in the field to see if we could do actually monitor for um, these alga in the field. Um, so, like Matt working in real time, that's me on the right working in real time, um, in the bottom of that vessel doing PCR. And just to put that into perspective, at Cawthron we have a lab with filtered air, positive pressure rooms, um, we change clothes every time we go in and out. Um, so we could run th this test in the bottom of the boat, basically. And it worked really well, we found it um, achieved as good a result as microscopy. Um, so future work, we do need to do some um, refinement to optimise our sensitivity and precision. Um, and the refinements we're going to do is um, how we extract the DNA off those filters. And then the future work, we've also this summer going to deploy um, 
an imaging flow cytobot, which is a field deployable flow cytometer. Um, so basically it draws um, water into it, um, uses a microscope, takes photos of the um, alga, um, and then can identify it. Um, and then the data are transmitted back to base. So this is an automatic lab person. And I'm finished.